On this episode of China Unscripted, why people want to boycott the new Mulan movie, how Hong Kong police are going undercover, and the battle for public opinion in Hong Kong. Hi, welcome to China Unscripted. I'm Chris Chappell. I'm Shelley Zhang. And I'm Matt Ganesta. Before we get into it, I just would like to thank the very first sponsor of China Unscripted, Path of Cha Tea Company. Woohoo! It's a small Brooklyn-based online tea company. And tonight, we're drinking their Silver Needle White Tea. So I have a real passion for Chinese tea, so I brewed this up for everyone. What do you think? Cheers. Are you supposed to clink your glasses when you drink tea? No. no. <laughs> well, because traditionally, like, they have these very, very small cups, so it would be impossible to clink them. I have already wrecked it. Well, you brought some Americana to it, which I appreciate it. All right, I'm going to sip Make sure it you sip it very close to the microphone so everyone can tell. Well, that's really good. That's right. Yeah, I really enjoy their teas. And I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. I actually, uh, a fan of the show had sent me some of their tea, and I was like, wow, this is really good. And I really like their, this is my first time trying their Silver Needle tea. But it's it's really good. Uh, Silver Needle is uh, one of the more popular types of white tea. It's a very light kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say floral. It's, it's, it's just, not very floral. It's, not it's, tastes, floral. it's, very it's got a little bit of a soy milk aftertaste in a good way. Okay. I think I have heard people describe it like that. I would just say to me that would make it sound disgusting. This tea is actually very tasty. It is very. You're tasty. not a soy milk fan. Ah, uh, not so much. But, uh, yeah, so once again, we're drinking uh, Silver Needle White Tea. If you'd like to try that or any of their other great teas, uh, use the link we've put in the description to order, and you'll be helping out China Unscripted as well. And I do personally recommend their tea. The the link, I'll say it for all those who do not have our description, it is pathofcha, that's C-H-A, dot com slash question mark R-E-F equals China Unscripted. Yeah, that, that REF is in there, and so it, it's not simple. <laughs> well, close. That's question mark REF equals China Uncensored. I feel like China that... Unscripted. China oh, Unscripted. China Unscripted. China Unscripted, China yes. Unscripted. I feel like that, it almost sounds like an equation when you read it out loud. It is. Hey, this is this actually. It is why really haven't good we tea, had, Yeah, why haven't we had tea on the podcast before? Because generally you try not to drink beverages audibly during a podcast. Well, that's true. Really? That's actually a really good why? point, Shelley. Why? Hey, so uh, what are we talking about today, Chris? Oh, well, I think the first thing I want to get into, so, I mean, obviously Hong Kong, there's so many stories coming out of Hong Kong, but something that just happened before we began the podcast is there's been this whole uh, hashtag boycott Mulan thing that's happened. Shelly, did you hear about this? No. Because you were on the subway instead of <laughs> diligently watching the news. Well, yeah. Well, take also, a I was working all day and not oh, yeah. paying attention to, is this on Twitter or Instagram or what? It's everywhere. What do you, just based on the name, what do you think happened? Uh, I don't know. I know people were mad about a bunch of things, including the fact that there was no Mushu anymore. No songs. No songs. Yeah, I don't know what what happened this time. Uh, well, so the Chinese American actress Liu Yifei, so she shared a picture originally posted by China State Run People's Daily uh, with a, uh, a tag that said, "I support Hong Kong's police. You can beat me up now." Oh, and then she added, "What a shame for Hong Kong." So this is being perceived as a voice of support for the Hong Kong police and against the Hong Kong protesters, who most people are kind of seeing as... Is she Chinese-American? She's Chinese-American, according to what I read, or at least nationalized. So the unusual thing about this is that there's actually been... um, I thought she was a Chinese actress. I thought they cast a Chinese, like, Chinese actress. Hmm. There's Mulan. According to source, I read Chinese American, but while you're fact checking that, Matt, what were you saying? I was going to say that there's actually been a lot of Chinese actors who have felt pressure to not support 
the Hong Kong protesters. They don't want to get Denise Hoed, that is, um, people like Kanto pop singer Denise Ho, who basically uh, sacrificed her entire China career by supporting the Hong Kong umbrella movement in 2014. So a lot of, you know, uh, actors and celebrities see this as like, oh, it's really too dangerous to go up, you know, against the Communist Party of China. But in this case, what the Milan actress did seemed to be a bit more proactively taking a stance does, to support the Hong Kong police. Yeah, it does seem odd that she went out of her way to do this. Well, okay, so she's Chinese-American maybe, but nationality-wise, but she moved to America when she was 10 years old um, and then returned to China like five years later. So, like, she was born in China. Her mother was like a stage performer. Her parents uh, divorced when she was a kid. She was like modeling from a pretty young age. Like, so she's really. Well, lately, I'd say all she's doing is modeling how not to behave. Well, I was going to say her. Very good, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> well, her career is obviously really dependent on the Chinese market. The, mm. the mainland Chinese market, and she's made a career in China, not like in Hollywood or something like that. That's true. And I always do appreciate, you know, the need to, you know, sell out freedom and democracy for your own personal gain. Uh, well, I think now all the celebrities are being told to fall in line. Yeah. So there have been multiple celebrities in the last few days coming out to say, you know, they support rule of law in Hong Kong, which means they support, you know, the, the <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what? I'm going to come out and say it as a very important celebrity myself uh-huh. that I support rule of law in China. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Jackie Chan also got got uh, featured again by CCTV. That doesn't you know. surprise me anymore. Yeah. In case somebody listening does not know what kind of person Jackie Chan is, uh, do either of you want to fill them in? Oh well, he's definitely a like pro ccp uh shill stooge was gonna be my you know yeah i mean he uh, famously a few years ago said that chinese people need to be controlled that you know and they're not ready for freedom yeah they're They're not not ready for democracy yeah they're not ready for democracy except everyone in taiwan where it works really well and you know in hong kong as much as they are allowed to uh and he's from hong kong so the the sellout thing was pretty people were pretty disgusted with him yeah. also though his son a few years ago got in pretty big trouble in china for smoking weed with some of his friends and getting busted yeah so you know jackie chan has to come out and you know toe the party line to though he was doing all of that stuff he was before. doing it before definitely yeah. but you know, know that's that's part that's part definitely of me, part of it part of me secretly hopes because i grew up watching jackie chan movies part of me hopes that like he really isn't a crazy jerk he is just doing that because like they've got something on him so, you'd, so that's why. you'd rather him be like blackmailed yeah than... <laughs> okay. i mean then that just kind of makes him like kind of more of a coward than like just like somebody who is genuinely uh but also your action hero is the last person you want to be a coward well he's like kind of a he's always been kind of a comedic action hero yeah i remember watching jackie chan movies with my dad as a kid yeah and my favorite part would be the the credits because they would always play the bloopers oh the bloopers yeah Yeah. like in all his hong kong movies remember in drunken master where he kicks that guy and like his face lands this this guy it lands almost into a pile of dog poop and the guy's like oh wow that was lucky and then he pushes his face into the dog poop <laughs> and it's oh man C- cinematic masterpiece yeah yep. um, but like you know Jackie Chan is also a member of the CCP C- CPPCC the Chinese, the Chinese People's People. Political Consultative oh. Conference. Everyone knows what that is. Yeah. That's right. So that technically, I suppose, makes him part of the United Front. <laughs> yeah. His fists are part of the United Front. Uh, so there's definitely a reason why people in Hong Kong much prefer Bruce Lee over uh, Jackie Chan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also, Bruce Lee no longer being alive doesn't have an opportunity to uh, take sides. Are you saying... Better 
dead than red, Matt? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? 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 That's what put, I got out of that. Do not put YouTube comments in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> or anything else. Moving on. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, so people who support Hong Kong want to boycott Mulan. Is that... That's basically the gist of it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't really planning on seeing it anyway, because a Mulan without... Mushu. Well, I'm going to make a man out of you is not... Uh, that is a great song, I guess. It is a great say. song. Let's get down to business. Wait, will we be sued for that? Do I need to cut that? Uh, well, if, if you had sung it on key, then yes. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> uh, I sang it at a key comfortable to my... Voice. I mean, that was such a great song, though, that I even forgave the fact that it was Donny Osmond singing it. Whoa, really? It was Donny Osmond. You didn't know he sang, yeah, he sang I, the male, yeah. Wow, I feel like that would not be allowed anymore. Um, that, most of the, most of the voice actors were, of the, of the Chinese characters were Asian. But, like, for example, um... Wasn't the emperor played by uh, Mr. Miyagi? Probably. <laughs> I, I can't like remember his name roles. anymore. Uh, he's Mr. Miyagi to all of us. He, he will always live in our hearts as Mr. Miyagi. That's right. Wax on, wax off. Uh, well, so well, speaking. That brings us to the Karate Kid that was filmed in China with Jackie Chan. Oh yeah, and Will Smith. Oh, yeah. where, where they where they didn't actually do karate; they did kung fu. Yeah. yeah. Let's not go there. Those are dark times. Uh, but so speaking of like Twitter, um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh, Trump had made a tweet. Well, he's made several tweets over the past week about Hong Kong. One including saying that uh, U.S. intelligence thinks that uh, Chinese military police are massing at the border. Well, I mean. Everybody saw the videos of that, so I don't... I'm that not... happened after his tweet, I believe. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah. The well. Global Times had already published the the videos of, like... Interesting. The, you know. So I'm not sure it needed U.S. intelligence at Wait, that point. So but... what you're saying is that President Trump gets his intelligence briefings from the Global Times. I I do not know where where President Trump gets his intelligence briefings. I I am not prepared to. But what if what if the Global Times is Trump's favorite state-run media? I mean, they are on Twitter. It's a possibility. Yeah. They are illegally jumping China's great firewall to be on Twitter. So I appreciate that. Well, so anyways, one of the things Trump tweeted recently was he, he, he said, actually I actually have it here, I have zero doubt that if President Xi wants to quickly and humanely solve the Hong Kong problem, he can do it. Personal meeting, question mark. And everyone kind of thought, like, wait, is he saying that he wants to meet with Xi well, Jinping? Well, yeah, because also this was in the, like, in the context of, like, prior, like, he had tweeted, like, a few things. One of them was, like, we want to reach a deal in the trade war, but mm -hmm. there needs to be a humane solution about Hong Kong or something like that. So yeah. in that context, it does seem like he's saying that Trump and she should meet. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's what I thought. That's, that's what I thought at the time. And then he eventually like did another tweet clarifying that he was like, no, 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 a personal meeting between Xi Jinping and the protesters. Yeah. Which, which I would love to see that. I would too. It was like, I'm sure Xi Jinping's a great guy, something like that. And if, I'm sure if he were to meet with the protesters, everything could be resolved. Well, you know, well yeah. I, mean, I mean, things could be resolved if Xi Jinping were willing to make the kind of concessions or even some of the concessions that the protesters want. But it's also questionable whether, A, Xi Jinping would want to, and B, if he does, would he be able to? Because in a lot of ways, he doesn't have absolute power. He's beholden to other interests within the Communist Party. I mean, can you imagine that would just blow everything? everybody's minds if Xi Jinping met with I mean who are the protest leaders anyway but like if Xi Jinping met with anybody that was pro-democracy in Hong Kong yeah that, that would be... just be like what happened uh yeah right but I mean obviously he doesn't want to set the type of precedent that he's willing to meet with these kind of radical anti-China hostile forces with the black hands 
don't forget the black right. hands. The well, black hands. also, I mean, I was just thinking about like back in 2000 or I guess this is 1999 when Jerome G met with Falun Gong practitioners. Oh yeah. Yeah. So then like, that I'm sure at the time they were like, Oh, the premier is meeting with us. Everything's going to be okay. And then and it then. almost immediately was much worse. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. not really but, even a guarantee. But it I really guess. wasn't Jerome G's fault. Like in his defense from, uh, from the interview that we did with, um, uh, uh, Tsai Shidong, sure, Tsai Dong. or Shu Tsai Dong, uh, a couple months ago, it seemed like Zhu Rongji genuinely wanted to help address the situation where Falun Gong was increasingly under persecution, and then Jiang Zemin, who was the the leader, was like, "Nope, we're gonna lock him up," and so then Zhu Rongji kind of got ousted for that. But Zhu Rongji may have been one of the top, you know, five or so party leaders but he wasn't the number one guy i mean there were also rumors at the time that Zhuangji had relatives who had practiced falun gong that like other top leaders had relatives like well it wouldn't yeah. be surprised i mean yeah. like one out of like 12 chinese people were practicing falun gong by I that time i can't remember who it is but supposedly some like you know Politburo leader's wife was pra- like it was just yeah it was definitely more of a okay yeah that's fine that's just something people do thing so does xi jinping have any relatives who practice hong kong democracy <laughs> uh I, I wonder i i i don't know i mean actually i don't know where xi jinping's relatives are mm. Hmm. Mm. in a safe and secure location i'm sure but uh so speaking again of the hong kong protesters what do you think about uh they had a uh, four or five day protest inside the Hong Kong airport. Um, so, I mean, obviously that has been uh, kind of spun by the Communist Party and the Hong Kong government as being like, oh, look at these protesters. They're disrupting all of our travels. Like, do you think that kind of worked? You, you know who disrupted the travels was the Hong Kong government. I mean, they had to shut down the airport to protect people. After there had been three days of everything's fine. But it might not have been fine that day. I mean, just look, when they sent in the police to beat a bunch of people, a bunch of people got beaten. I I think it is, like, it was definitely an escalation tactic by the Hong Kong government. Uh, because this is not the first protest. There have been several protests at the Hong Kong airport, and people were mostly just hanging out in the rivals' hall, you know, uh, just, like, holding up banners and... You know, so chanting. Saying, Sorry and, for the inconvenience, but we're like, fighting for freedom. And like, you know, g- giving out tourist brochures to people, and then uh, singing songs, while, you know, while sitting on the floor. So like, for three days, it was not like nothing was really happening. But then over the weekend, there were pretty violent um, crackdowns by the Hong Kong police, including a girl who got shot in the eye. With prob- what they say was probably like a bean bag round, something like that, shattered her goggles, ruptured her eye, and so then on Monday, that was like they were going to call for people to come to the airport to like protest the fact that this girl's eye got shot out. So more people did show up at the airport, and that was the day when the Hong Kong government decided to cancel all the flights. Yeah, but there's another factor that's been happening recently, which is that Hong Kong police have been going undercover as protesters and it appears that uh, some of the so-called protester violence is actually like a plant by the Hong Kong police to stir things up. It's a possibility. I don't know that that's been proven, uh, but there's, there's people have brought up suspicious things that happened with some Mm -hmm. of the violence. They're calling them like agent provocateur things that the police are doing uh well the police did definitely like burst out as protesters and arrest a bunch of other protesters yeah and yeah. i saw the video of that it was it was very strange it's like this guy this protester was like slammed on the ground his face was super bloody and like it looked like there were protesters on top of him holding him down and tying him up and i was like wait what is going on here and it turned out that those were undercover policemen yeah i do have to say that they did a better job of pretending to be protesters than undercover Chinese 
police do of being undercover? Have you seen like Chinese police who are like plainclothes police and they all look the same? Well, I'm thinking of uh, Steve Buscemi and his hello, fellow kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello, fellow kids. Yeah, hello, ho- fellow Hong Kong pro democracy protesters. Uh, yeah, you can kind of tell when they all kind of have that like military ish haircut yeah. and you know they're all wearing the same type of polo shirts uh, and yeah yeah uh, <laughs> well but i mean it's it's one of those things where like i mean it almost sounds like a conspiracy but the hong kong police commissioner did admit to having police go undercover dressed as protesters but denied that they incited violence mm-hmm. so i mean the press conference for that was interesting. He was like, you know, we've been disguising our uh, our policemen as protesters, but we haven't been inciting anything. And then somebody is like, we've seen you inciting stuff. And he's like, no, no. Well, I mean. But just to get him to admit that, uh, that they'd been disguising them already took, you know, a lot of uncovering and video footage yeah. that, that proved it. Well, I just can't believe how much things have escalated. Like when we... It's only been six weeks since we were there, and it's gotten really crazy. Well, I think it's, well, I mean. Well, I'm thinking of, like, you know, it was shocking when we were there, and, and like, it came out like, oh, in one night, police used 150 cans of tear gas, which was more than they use in the entire Umbrella Movement. And now they've they've upped it. In one day, they used 800 cans of tear gas. Yeah, I mean, they had already, like, done so much more with the tear gas that now people are, who are just you know living in these residential areas of Hong Kong they're getting tear gassed people are just getting tear gassed in the subway because for no. some reason the police have decided that setting off tear gas in the subway is a good idea I saw the subway crews trying to clean that up today it seems like a mess oh, oh my God. gosh just like with the ventilation and everything it would just be nuts which and, is a shame because Hong Kong subways were very nice and then uh Compared to New York. Oh, yeah. I, I missed Hong Kong subways so much the other day. I went down into the subway, and I was like, this smells terrible. I remember Hong Kong's air-conditioned mall-like subway system. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, nice. yeah, and then there there was footage of police just kind of firing tear gas down an empty street. Which was oh, yeah. both worrying and hilarious. And it was like residential too. Yeah, it was in Sham Shui Po, which is like in a more that's kind of in some of the areas where there are more like pro police, like pro uh, government people living. But so there's been more clashes in those areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like there were no protesters on the street; they were just firing it down an empty street. Just practice. You're, <sighs> it was. Yeah, it, it, it was strange to see that video. It's like, what? What are they trying to do? It, it just the response by the Hong Kong government and the Hong Kong police just doesn't make any sense. Like, it seems like they want people to be upset. Well, I think they do want people to be upset at the protesters. But they're doing such a bad job of redirecting the anger. I mean, I think they kind of succeeded with the airport stuff. Oh, you think? Because it got ugly on mm. Tuesday. And Monday night-ish, I think it got kind of ugly because travelers who were stranded were getting upset, and then there started to be more reports about that and about people being angry and getting into, like, you know, you had, like, video of, like, a woman who was trying, she was like, I have a baby at home, I need to get home, and then the protesters weren't letting them through, and they were like, your flights are canceled, and she was like, no, mine's not canceled, you know, but that's all great propaganda. Or that one Australian guy who was arguing with the protesters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know that that would look good to people outside of mainland China, but Global Times used it where he was saying that, you know, the protesters should stand down, you know, it's interfering with people's lives. Well, there was you know. the Global Time reporter who was a disguised as a tourist, quote unquote, at the well, airport. Well, I mean, I think And then they got Well, that was the next up. day. Yeah, then see Tuesday it got really bad because there were it wasn't just him. There mm-hmm. were and three instances of people who the protest crowd accused of men who the protest crowd accused of being undercover police or otherwise suspicious because by this time everybody knows that the police are going undercover as protesters freaking out people are freaking out about it and then 
Uh, they find these people who they say are acting suspiciously. One guy had like wooden sticks in his bag. So protesters are like, this guy's trying to stop, start something. Another guy, I don't really know what he did, but like it was like an hours long confrontation. And it was documented by a CNN reporter who was there, James Griffiths. Mm. And, you know, it was just the they had zip tied him. The guy was fainting like there was arguments among the protesters about whether to let him go or not. You know, there Mm. were paramedics who were trying to get in and like it was just like a mess. Yeah, and then that was a Global Times guy. Ultimately. No, then there then there was another guy who was the Global Times guy. Yeah, so there who were also three. Got tied up. Yeah, so the Global Times guy was he was had a pre- press vest on and was taking lots of like close up photos of the protesters, and then the protesters. In a way that's not like yeah. I'm a tourist. I'm a tourist. Let me well, a well, photo. I mean, like he had a press vest on, and then the mm. protesters were like, "What are you doing? Why are you like?" taking these photos like they thought he was acting weird and then he claimed to be a tourist Mm -hmm. which seems to be not the great idea but also when you're wearing a press vest but he also he was probably afraid to say that he was a global times reporter but that's my favorite chinese state-run media yeah it's not everybody's favorite chinese state-run media especially when the editor-in-chief was like hong kong protesters should be shot on the spot yeah i mean that's a whole other thing but like the Global Times reporter, then they found an I Love Hong Kong Police t shirt in his bag. Oh. Like one of those light blue ones that people were wearing that said, you know, I Heart HK Police. Mm-hmm. And then that made them think that this guy's definitely not really a journalist. Oh. And then that's when they started kind of harassing him and he got tied up. And then they started going through his things and like pulled out his passport and yeah. and eventually found out that he was a Global Times reporter. But, it, yeah, it, again, he had to be taken out by paramedics. And all of this is feeding Beijing's sort of disinformation campaign that they've been waging against the Hong Kong protesters. Uh, I know they've been saying that, uh, well, obviously they go back to the tried and true, these protests are just caused by the black hands of the United States and Taiwan. I think specifically they said, like, Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell are are behind the chaos, which... What? <laughs> <laughs> can you can you see the two of them ever agreeing on anything? I mean, I I know Pelosi has said stuff stuff about the Hong Kong protesters. Has Mitch McConnell come out and taken a stand or something? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's that is pretty bizarre to think about. Uh, but you know, the black hands are everywhere. That's right. I think actually one of the things that the Hong Kong government and the uh, Communist Party have achieved through these various subversion tactics is even if, um, you know, incidents happen and people, you know, don't believe that the protesters really were violent, like within the body of the protesters themselves, like when you never know who's really on your side and who's an undercover agent like it creates this suspicion and this environment of distrust and so it subverts the entire energy and culture of the movement oh yeah i think they successfully did that and now we'll have to see if the protesters can kind of recover from that like Uh, how do you how do you be like calm and kind and treat everyone like with generosity and respect as you know they did when we were there how do you continue that when one in every blank number of people are in literally an undercover agent trying to undermine your movement or well, there I, are triads coming to beat you up that the police know about but let happen well i think that still is a kind of a common enemy which is the triads and the police but this whole like from inside thing is insidious and well I'd say that there's always been a little bit of tension in the protest movement between the frontline protesters, the ones mm-hmm. that are more willing to push the boundaries, yeah. kind of facing off directly with the police, willing to throw things back, willing to kind of like push the push mm-hmm. the envelope that way, uh, and the general body of protesters. Like the frontline people are the people who broke into LegCo, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, unless some of them are plants. Who knows? Like, I mean, that's that just throws everything. Well, I mean, for- people were saying that even at that time, people were like, oh, this guy who tackled one of the democracy 
activist he looks like a plant because you know so like mm-hmm. people have always been remember on, even on the night of the th- the 30th when we were in outside ledge code there was this incident where people surrounded somebody who oh, they yeah. thought was and, suspicious and they, they pulled me in because i was a white guy with a camera and they wanted me to like document and what they did though like they they treated her pretty well but they surrounded her and they like said you have to delete the photos from your phone and identify yourself uh but they didn't actually hurt her they just like kind of surrounded her and then she was scared and she felt trapped and you know it wouldn't have been fun to be her in the situation but they they made her show the photos that she took and it was very suspicious and then once she did the things that they, they requested they let her go and you can't you also can't forget that you know added to all of this is the fact that China has said like repeatedly, oh, you know, we, we might we might send in the military. Hey, we're going to have uh, military police hold these training drills uh, near in nearby Shenzhen, where we have some police dressed as black shirt protesters, and we have other police charge them with ride shields. I mean, the Hong Kong garrison did that themselves. That's right. Right, and that video, that pro- that propaganda video, they put out for uh, their like, you know. Mm-hmm their anniversary like of the PLA that was a few weeks ago. I, I just don't see how the Chinese Communist Party thinks they're going to win this propaganda war. Like, I don't understand they why they... are winning the propaganda war inside China. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. You know, that's a good point, because, you know, as they say, all <laughs> politics are domestic Gee. politics, right? Yeah, I mean, so many Chinese people do really believe that... Uh, you know, this is the Hong Kong people. They're causing chaos. They want independence. They shouldn't do that because they're part of China. They don't love China. Uh, well, and, you know, they're, they're, you know, ruining Hong Kong. They're making mm-hmm. Hong Kong a chaotic place. There needs to be rule of law. Like, you know, and it's funny because the protesters are like, what we want is rule of law. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but, yeah, so that is that line is really working inside mainland china yeah i do wonder how it's going to hold up internationally like if people are going to be uh, like really upset by like the the airport kind of protests but it's like you know you can't lose sight of the fact that you know, these are people fighting desperately for their freedom in the face of the world's largest authoritarian regime yeah i mean i think they're doing some soul searching and regrouping now after that happened um, people, some people came out to the airport on Wednesday and held signs saying, "Like we apologize, we we didn't handle everything well." Like they had a citizens' press conference um, where they they talked about how they can have to figure out how to deal with this type of stuff in the future. Uh, it's it's a difficult situation, but every time that the conventional wisdom has been kind of like, "Well, this is the time that like the public will turn against the protesters." because they went too far that hasn't happened yet seemingly Mm -hmm. um like i mean you still saw like hospital workers protesting this past week there's been recent lawyer protests um so it still seems like a a big chunk of mainstream hong kong society is still just as riled up as they were when we were there when is this going to come out a day or two okay well on the next big test actually will be on sunday Hong Kong time. Um, I think it's it's either Saturday or Sunday, but I'm pretty sure it's Sunday. The Civil Rights Front has called for, uh, Civil Human Rights Front has called for another protest. And they're the ones that organized the protests that were a million people, two million people. Mm. Uh, lately, the protests that have been happening for the last six weeks or so have been organized by different kind of groups like Smaller the protesters themselves like the civil human rights front hasn't come out and organized a big one i think since the july 1st protest uh but they've come out to say that they they're going to do one and then the police have denied their permit mm. um they said they'd let them have a rally at victoria park but wouldn't let them leave the park so we'll see what happens yeah, that's what they tried to do on july 1st too when they had a permit to w- go from Victoria Park, walk to Legislative Council. Yeah, they and were then like, the police no, tried don't to... Don't leave the park. Yeah. And meanwhile, people are fainting because it's super hot. Yeah, I mean, that park can only hold so many people. And I don't know what they will do if tons of people show up. Yeah, will they... I mean, they've been practicing shooting tear gas at empty streets. 
I, I think the thing about the, the when the police refuse to give a permit to a rally or a march, then anybody participating in that is now technically part of an illegal demonstration. Unless they're part of a religious gathering where they sing sing hallelujah to the Lord. That f- feels so long ago. It does. Yeah. I don't know if that's really been tested. So people have been, you know, arrested as rioters, and that's one of the reasons they can arrest people as rioters if they're taking part in these things that are not officially sanctioned by the police. Yeah, which is scary because that holds, I think, like a 7 to 10 year jail term. The maximum sentence is 10 years in okay. prison. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's that's was part of the fear of the extradition bill in the first place, that people like that could be sent to mainland China. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, the government is sending some weird mixed signals, though. Like Benny Tai, who was one of the Umbrella Movement leaders, was just released on bail. Hmm. So uh, remember when Joshua Wong was suddenly released early after, like, the two million person protest. Right. Well, I mean, he was released at the at, at a time that was also he could have been released anyway on. Did that make sense? It does to me. Yeah, it was it was not necessary like an early release. Like it was something that was scheduled. Like it was he could have been released anywhere between these two dates and they released him on the the earliest part of that range. Mm-hmm. So Which was great cuz we got to talk to him. Well, Benny Tai was jailed for 16 months. Wow. And he only went to prison in April. So this is kind of early. Yeah. That is early. But yeah, seeing seeing the videos of like those policemen acting the way they are, it's really difficult like i i wonder what's going through their mind because a lot of them are the same age as the protesters i don't know i mean i think also there's probably a lot of police who feel put upon as if mm-hmm. they've become the scapegoats of i mean that's kind of the what some of the official like police statements that have come out um it seems like a lot of it is more about how like they're they're the victims kind of mm. you know um and there was uh, yeah it was, it's i think they do feel like they're the scapegoats in a certain way well they are victims because the they're both like the the police and the protesters are two opposing forces that are essentially being like pit against each other by the Hong Kong government and ultimately the Communist Party. So, like, they're being, they are being forced to deal with protesters in the way that the government instructs them to. You know, I, I don't buy that. Like, I mean, the victims are the, the young girl who gets her eye ruptured by a police beanbag. Oh, for, for sure. And, like, you know, those, the protesters are also sacrificing their futures and their lives in this fight. So anyone who's like, oh, well, I have to go with the Communist Party because my job and money, you know, it, life is about choosing between good and evil. And, like, if you're choosing to be uh, the heavy hand of Beijing, like, come on. I can't feel too bad for you. I do think, though, that a lot of this would be solved if the government, if the Hong Kong government had any ability to do anything. To do anything. Yeah. Except ab- abdicate to, like, police enforcement, basically. I mean, there are some protesters who have basically said that, like, Hong Kong is more or less under martial law now because the only, like, real interface they have is, like, the police coming out every weekend and, like, tear gassing people and people fighting back against police. And that's become, like, the, how they, they deal with the government because the government officials have not been, you know... Yeah, I don't know how Hong Kong society is going to heal after this. Like, it's been so fractured. And there are a lot of people who are, you know, upset at the protesters. There's a, there's a, there's definitely a generational divide here yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, all of those Tories were upset about the American independence fighters. I see no good Tories. Are you using Tory as like a general Slur. term for pro-British? Yeah, that's Americans. what they called them. Yeah, well, I mean. If I remember my American history. Uh, yeah, the Tories are also the conservative. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, I don't know what will happen. 
fun times. So I guess the question is, do you guys wish you were back in Hong Kong? Yes. Yes. I would love to be back there now and just be like on the front lines and and just like, yeah. I mean, because I think that that as media, you know, you are able to play an important role in documenting what's what's happening there. And if there were not media there, and if there were not a lot of brave journalists there risking their own safety to cover what's happening, then it would be kept in the dark. And the Communist Party would, you know, be able to do whatever it wanted there. And if you look at like, you know, there's, for example, a lot of uh, anti uh, China or anti Communist Party protests in Africa, for example, that get zero media coverage. They're upset about like the, the Chinese mining uh, and other things that, that, that the Chinese state owned companies are doing in their countries. And like, there's no media there that, you know, protesters get beaten up uh, and like, there's, there's nothing, right? So Hong Kong is like, has the, the benefit of having all these reporters putting themselves at risk to cover what's happening there. And I just think that it's uh, Hong Kong people are very lucky to have all this coverage. And, you know, I just think it's exciting. I'd like to be there. I do think that there's a risk with the coverage in the Western media about the Hong Kong thing where you only cover it when it's kind of exciting or you only cover the parts that are, I'm not saying that the reporters are doing this, but I think like when, when is the world paying attention? It's when it's like violent clashes or something and people aren't really paying attention to the, the fact that, yeah, that there were like four days of completely peaceful protests at the airport before Mm -hmm. this, you know, or things like that where it becomes, or like the story becomes, will the Chinese Communist Party send in the tanks, you know, and that becomes the focus of things. And then you accidentally end up like doing the, their propaganda work for them in a way. By promoting the terror. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, uh, I mean, it's a tricky thing. And uh, I think this is an important story for people to pay attention to. I mean, we're so used to in the media focusing on conflict uh, that, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's I have no disagreement with you on that perspective, but it is hard to make interesting news stories about it's been peaceful today, it's peaceful the day before, and the day before, and it may continue this way. Well, so on that note, is there any more lighthearted news anyone wants to talk about? Uh, probably my favorite China news this week has been the fact that Huawei has been getting dinged in China for having Taiwan on their phones as a country. Did you see this? No. This was after Versace and Coach both got in trouble for having t-shirts or something that listed Hong Kong, Macau, uh, Macau and, Taiwan. and Taiwan separate from, uh, you know, China. And uh, so they came out and, like, abjectly apologized. And then... Uh, people were pointing out that, like, there are other companies that are doing the same thing, and one of them, hilariously, was Huawei. Perfect. Which, yeah, just... just the is, irony. It was just pretty funny. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Hermes bag. Oh, the Hermes The beautiful bag. crocodile skin, red with yellow stars. It's the Chinese flag. Yeah. It's a great visual thing. But it's, yeah, I mean... It's a really ugly bag. Yeah. I got to say. Unless you're very, very nationalistic. Well, the thing is that it seems that that bag is literally one of a kind. Somebody on Twitter had done this kind of uh, investigation into the history of that bag, and it seems to have been made for the wife of an incre- incredibly rich um, Shanghai guy, Zhou Zhengyi, who later got uh, imprisoned because he was involved in, I mean, a bunch of corruption, but also it probably had something to do with the power struggle uh, between Jiang's faction and actually Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao, because this was 2003. And it involved Jiang Zemin's son and, like, all this kind of weird, shady stuff that went down. Hold on, my my head is spinning. So this stupid bag that's, like, $124,000... Hermes bag that's the Chinese flag. Uh-huh. 
It, it, what? It, it is possibly connected to the factional struggles within the <laughs> Chinese Communist Party. Wow. Now I know what they mean by no news is good news. I mean, it is it is a very, very weird thing where everybody was just kind of making fun of the bag and then it's only like, oh, wait, what? Well, that definitely was a, a much lighter note to end our podcast on. Uh, otherwise, we'd just be drinking this nice tea and weeping at the moon. Thank you, Li Po. Yes, thank you, thank you. Should I say Li Bai? Li Bai, yeah, Li Bai, that's a good Li Bai. So yes, anyways, thank you for listening. I just want to remind everyone that the tea we're drinking is uh, Silver Needle White Tea from Path of Cha. Be sure to go to their website. Uh, we have a link below. I'll tell you it again. It's Path of Cha, C-H-A dot com slash question mark ref equals china unscripted uh you know we get a nice little uh little cut of that if you have used that link so you know support the show buy some great tea back me up on this guys yeah no it is it is really good tea legit yeah uh so yeah thank you for listening to china unscripted once again i'm chris chapel i'm shelly Chang, and i'm matt ganesta and we'll talk to you next time